We all need to get out here and start to share this knowledge and bring it back into the domain of common sense. It needs to be as widely known as the fact that the sun rises in the morning. So what exactly is morality? What does it actually mean to be a moral person? The more simple and straightforward the question is, the more complex, convoluted, and obfuscated the answer will be when coming from mainstream institutions like religion, government, public education, and other institutions. If we don't understand what it means to be moral, then we can never truly be a being who respects others in this world. And actually, by extension, we can never truly be a being who loves and respects ourselves. Because part of the integrity of being an individual is respecting the integrity of others. We need to have a clear and concise definition of what it actually means to be moral. No religion is required and no belief is required. Learning morality as a science is as simple to the layman as learning how to work with gravity, to recognize its basic operation and to harmonize with that in a way that we don't get hurt. We don't let our children walk over a ledge. We build airplanes because we learn how to use certain forces in nature which don't obviate the existence of gravity, but they allow us to temporarily work around its effect. So with the science of morality, we can do the same thing, but we need to know what does it mean to be moral. This is the one thing that is not taught that it should be the first thing that we're taught as children. So I'll start off by giving the correct definition and then as an exercise, we'll go back and look at some of the incorrect teachings in religion. And then finally, we'll come up with some solutions about what do we do about the fact that this is not widely understood science. And here is the definition of what is morality. To be moral is to be a good person. And to be a good person is to respect oneself and by extension respect others, respecting the rights of each and every individual around us by not harming them. And not harming them means we don't steal their life, rights, or property. We don't steal something that doesn't belong to us, that rightfully belongs to them, and we have no business taking from them. We don't do that because we wouldn't want the same thing done to us. And the way reality works is, should we continually harm others, there are consequences. As we don't want our shit stolen, we also have a moral duty as an extension of that to defend ourselves against any attempt to steal our life rights or property. And that, of course, is the principle of self-defense. So there's kind of two sides to morality. Don't harm others. Defend yourself. That is the entirety of what it means to be moral. The science of morality is that when we are immoral, both individually and as an entire population, as a species, there are consequences. And this is exactly why the world is in the state of chaos that it is right now, because we are reaping the consequences of what we have sown through our immorality. And reality, like a giant mirror, reflects back to us the conditions that we create, that we put out. So when we are immoral and we cause others to suffer, we suffer through being enslaved. It's really that simple. It's so simple that a young child can grasp it. And then that child growing up will always have that knowledge and understanding and any choice they make to deviate from that, to disregard or to spite morality, well, they already know that there are consequences. So they're basically accepting upon themselves those consequences. They're accepting that they will be a slave. They're accepting that harm will be brought upon them in some unknown way that we can't necessarily always predict or calculate. Basically, the universe is going to point a mirror back to that person and say, look what a piece of shit you are. Look what a piece of trash you are, that you can't even respect the rights of others. And it will continually drive that lesson over and over again until that soul gets broken up into oblivion because it refuses to accept such a simple truth or until finally the heart is opened and that soul becomes enlightened and recognizes and finally accepts the reality of morality and finally accepts that morality is very simple. It's not hard, it's not being enslaved, but it's actually the most free that we can be 
in this universe. And it opens up the door to many amazing things. But that's what morality actually is. So let's take a look at some of the bullshit that the cultural religions and the New Age religion and government and others are propagating as morality. The cultural religions, in particular Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, to some degree, as part of their cultural traditions, it is taught that homosexuality is considered immoral. So basically being gay is considered immoral in a number of religious traditions. So my question to you is, is homosexuality immoral? No, homosexuality is not immoral. The only case that any sexuality can be immoral is when it causes harm. And the way that we cause harm in our sexuality is through rape. Rape is the theft of the free will choice of the other being or beings that we're engaging in sexual acts with from their choice. So we're basically forcing them using violence to have sex with us. The sexual orientation is completely irrelevant to the morality. The only thing that matters is, is it consensual? Was it agreed upon between the parties involved? Did they give their free will agreement and choice to say, yes, there had to have been a clear consent that they were not being coerced to engage in sexuality against their free will choice. That is the only criteria that any sexuality can ever be considered immoral. Already we have one strike against the major religions and their cultural traditions for teaching incorrectly that homosexuality or any kind of sexual preference is immoral. Let's give an example from our friends in the New Age movement, the New Age religion, I should say, because it is a religion. It is a socially engineered religion just as much as the astrotheological religions of past times were socially engineered into the fabric of society. To be moral by the standard of the New Age religion is to ignore the negative. New Age religionists believe that when we ignore something negative, we take the power away from it. We can cease it from existing. We can actually take it out of existence. And so one of the biggest teachings of the New Age religion is we should ignore the negative. And if you talk to enough people who are strong, strong adherents to the New Age religion, you will see that theme come out over and over again. A complete su suppression of the masculine trait of self-defense and also the trait to speak up the truth as we see it, to point out evil in our midst and say, that is wrong, that is immoral, you should not do that. You'll never hear hardcore New Age religionists speaking in that way. They will always run in the opposite direction. The morality taught by the New Age is ignore the negative. Now, I don't know if you've ever had a health problem, whether it's a serious health problem like a cancer or some pathological disease or even just a mild ache that just lasts longer than usual. But I can tell you from my own personal experience that ignoring health issues will not allow them to go away. The opposite will happen. You'll get sicker. You'll be cast further and further into illness, into pain and suffering because you refuse to recognize the simple truth, which is that the quote unquote negative information coming to you vis-a-vis -vis the pain in your body is actually a message that you need to wake up and take action to defend your body, which means to recognize and identify what are the root factors that actually led to that condition and then take action accordingly, but certainly not ignore it. If someone ignores the negative, all I can say is good luck with that because that is the mindset of a slave. And it's also immoral. See, this is the irony that the New Age religion is actually teaching people to be immoral because it's teaching them to ignore the evil that, that is being done in the world, the evil that is being done on their watch, and teaching them they should never speak up against it. The religion is teaching them the opposite of morality. It's teaching them to embrace immorality. So we can pretty much throw away the New Age religion as a religion. Certainly there are teachings and principles within the, the broader teaching of that religion, just like any religion. There are certain practices that are valuable, like meditation. And we shouldn't throw away the baby with the bathwater. We should keep everything that is of true value. But to follow it as a religion, meaning to accept the precepts of the religion, of any of these religions, is basically to not understand what is morality, number one, and therefore, by extension, to be immoral, to never be able to actually be a moral person. And ultimately, those religions are leading the person down the path of becoming a piece of shit a self-loathing piece of shit who cannot recognize the difference between right and wrong, 
and therefore will continually act in the wrong way. Let's talk about government. Government, of course, is a religious cult whose adherents believe in the immoral and illegitimate notion of authority. Authority is the claim by one individual or by a small group of people together that they are the rulers or the masters and that they get to dictate to the rest of the people how they may act or behave and they may use violence and coercion and they may steal the free will choices of those other people because they are the rulers and masters. Government on its face is completely immoral because no one has a right to coerce anyone else to act against their free will, regardless of what the goal or the aim of that action is. That's always 100% immoral. So adherence to the religious cult of government are already immoral because they are not standing up against evil or wrongdoing, which is the violence and coercion that is employed in order to perpetuate government as an institution. The only way that government can continue is if violence and coercion continue, and if the people who tacitly accept government, even if they're not actively involved, they never speak up against it. They never stand up and say, this is wrong, this is incorrect, this is immoral, because they don't understand basic morality, which is don't steal the life, the rights, or the property of any other being, regardless of what excuses or bullshit you come up with to claim that that is necessary. It is always immoral at all times and places, 100% of the time. And that is the science of morality, that it is so precise and the consequences of which are also very precise. And we will exactly reap those consequences as long as we continue to ignore what is morality or to be apathetic to it and obviously not act according to morality. Religion is the problem, it's the root causal factor because it codifies immorality and it distracts us from learning true morality. I was speaking with a friend the other day and he said, Dave, I, I like your videos a lot and I know you offer solutions, but if you can talk even more about what are the solutions, that's gonna be helpful for people who are kind of in a spot where, you know, geez, what the hell would, do we do? So I wanna to try to be a little more focused on the solution side. What is the solution to extricate ourselves from this current state of enslavement that we find ourselves in, which is the consequence of being immoral for all these millennia. We're not gonna be able to just flip a switch and turn it all off instantly. We're already in the situation, so we need to pass through it. We need to pass through it. So the solution is very simple. First of all, before you even go and take a single action in the world, it's important to become very clear in your knowledge and understanding of what morality actually is. That's why I've spent a lot of time on that, because as long as we have that knowledge, that can be the foundation upon which we can build all the other solutions and actions that we take. So the first part of the solution is, don't just hear me say this once and be like, oh, okay, I get it. No, you wanna really know that deep knowing state of knowing it in your entire being, in your entire physical body, in your entire mind, in your psychology, in your emotions, and ultimately in your soul. You wanna really know and own what is morality. Once you've done that, other things are gonna to start to become clear. For example, in my case, once I knew and understood that, I knew what I had to do. I knew I had to get out here and jump on camera and start talking and share and create art and ideas and get it out there. That was the clear guidance that came to me. You will have a similar experience and I think it will be the same for most people, at least at this stage, because the first thing is we need to have more people talking about it. We all need to get out here and start to share this knowledge and bring it back into the domain of common sense needs to be as widely known as the fact that the sun rises in the morning and that gravity pulls things down to earth. That's how common sense and basic the understanding of morality needs to be in order for us to really turn this around. And then the next part of it is within whatever sphere of influence we're operating, we need to put our thoughts and ultimately the actions that we take as a result of those thoughts through a moral filter as we're going to take any particular action in life, whatever it is, large or small, we simply need to pass it through that filter that we've now built into our psychological software. And therefore we, we start to act more and more morally. And what's gonna happen is, even though we're already in this predicament and things seem kind of shitty, and they are, and things are still getting worse, we can start to turn it around because there is a scientifically precise, a mathematically precise formula called the law of freedom that basically says as more and more of humanity becomes moral, then freedom 
increases proportionally with that morality. And the systems of control and enslavement start to unravel, dissipate, self-destruct, devolve, and ultimately become irrelevant and fall away. The speed at which that happens is really, again, a function of how quickly humanity as an entire species wakes up to this truth. That's why I do what I do. I want to reach more people because the more individuals who wake up to this understanding and apply it in their lives and then teach it to others, the faster this ripples through all of humanity and we can cast away all these immoral bullshit religions that are holding us back and actually come to the true level of spirituality and spiritual enlightenment, which is to understand these very simple truths about the integrity of self, not harming others, respect for self and others. So that is the end goal of how to get out of this predicament. If somebody f commits fraud against you or theft against you individually and you know it and it's clear, then you need to take action accordingly in your own life. And probably action to stop that person, but you need to expose the truth about that individual and what they did. So I would agree that exposing lies and deception is important and that should probably continue. But absent of a true and deep and holistic and innate and built in and fully integrated understanding of what is actually the difference between right and wrong, what is actually it means to be moral, we're never really gonna get out of this predicament. You can bet your life on that one. That will always be true at all times and places. So the real solution is to become an initiate into occult knowledge, to start your journey into the occult. The occult does not mean evil, it simply means hidden. So you become an initiate into hidden knowledge of which the definition of objective morality is a part because it is largely hidden. You need to stop lying to yourself. Stop deluding yourself that government or anything resembling it could ever be moral when in fact it is always 100% immoral. And you need to start acting out in your own life accordingly and share this with other people. Once you've fully integrated this knowledge, then you're gonna know what to do. You're gonna get guidance from your higher self, from the universe, from your spirit guides, from God, however you wanna put it. You're gonna get the downloads that are gonna tell you, just like I was told, Dave, you already developed skills in front of the camera, you've already been recording videos for several years. What you need to do is you need to get out there with the same skills and just keep doubling down on that, become more of an artist, get better at it, speak about it over and over again, make it your life's purpose. And so I got that download and that resonated with me. And the more I get into this work, the more I feel like I'm doing exactly what creation has charged me to do. And I know that I'm part of the solution and I will continue to get up every day to do the most that I can in order to move this forward. If you are looking for help and support, obviously become part of a community, freedomvibe.art. We are a community as well. You can always reach out to me. I have all my contact info, mainly through the website is the easiest way to get in touch with me. You can become part of this community. I'm also a part of a greater community called the One Great Work Network, which was created and is led by Mark Passio, another great teacher of natural law, and just become part of a community so that you can get inspiration from others and encouragement and you can also collaborate to do more than what you can do as an individual. So learn natural law like it's common sense, almost like you've learned how to drive a car so you don't even have to think about it consciously. It's built into your hardware and software. I hope you found this video to be really helpful. My website is called freedomvibe.art where I share principles of natural law that would allow us to change the current human condition from what it is right now, slavery, to one of true freedom. Take action to apply these principles in your own life. And once you've gained enough of an understanding, you've done the work on yourself, start to teach and share these principles with others using your own words and your own way. Also, if you're getting a lot of value and you want me to be able to reach more people, then I wanna invite you to help me out by making a 100% voluntary donation to my work and to this project. You can do that at freedomvibe.art slash donate. Check it out, get involved, be a true freedom fighter, embrace the values of knowledge and understanding, courage and care, and let's make this happen. Thank you very much.